So what are you guys? We are the Sparkwood family. Hi guys, this is John from Sparkwood. We have a question about E to the pi versus pi to the E. Uh, this is pretty famous, so I'm sure there are a lot of good YouTube videos out there that talk about this. What I want to try to do is sort of a more visual approach as opposed to a computational approach. Um, but you know, and we'll try not to use any calc, but in the end, to justify some of our claims, we're going to have to use a little bit. Okay? So, a couple things. One is, what's the motivation? So, we look at this guy and want to compare. If you want to compare, for example, e and pi, I mean, that's pretty mellow. Pi is bigger, right? Okay. So, what makes this kind of suck is the exponent, right? So, e to the pi, and of course, this exponent as well, pi to the e, right? So, one thing you want to do if you want to make exponents more manageable or tractable is uh, use log, right? So a good thing might be to take the log of both guys and compare that's them. Totally, that's a fine idea. But um, I think in this particular case, we'll just use that as inspiration for a visual approach. So we'll take a look at the function log of x. So a couple things we want to believe. We could show it if you want, but I think uh, you know, it's pretty believable. Log of x is continually increasing. So what that means is, is that if you make the input bigger, the output will be bigger as well. OK, so we need that. So log of x, and this guy is an increasing function. Second, you know that log is, well, his special buddy is e. Because log of e is 1. OK, so we know that. Also, you know that, of course, log of 1 is 0. OK, those are our benchmarks. Um, what I want to actually try to do here is, believe it or not, doing this in general makes the problem, at least to me, easier than doing it for the specific case of e to the pi and pi to the e. So what we want to do is look at two guys, a and b, where b is bigger than a. Okay. And then, uh, for reasons we'll explain in a second, we want A to be at least as big as E. Okay, because E is kind of our special guy, and if A is actually less than E, then we have a problem. It might not be so apparent why, okay? But uh, we'll try to visually make it believable, and then later on, if we need to, we'll show it. Okay? All right, so for the moment, we're going to choose A and B, right? And we're going to choose some, some random guy A and B. B is bigger than A, and A is at least as big as E, okay? And our argument's going to kind of be like this. If we look at this, right? Or Okay, across this way. If we look at um, A, then the output for A is log of A for the height. And if we look at B, the output for B is log of B for the height. Okay, no big deal. Okay, and what we want to compare, if you can believe the picture, is we want to look at the slope of these guys. All right, the slope associated with A and the slope associated with B. But as your input gets bigger, the slope apparently becomes what? Less. Okay? All right, uh, if that's true, then our argument's going to follow. So let's, let's see. Let's try this out. So what's our claim? Our claim is from the picture that as you get bigger, so B is bigger than A, that the slope of the bigger guy, right, slope associated with B, is less than the slope associated with A. OK. OK, if you're willing to believe that, the rest is just pure computation, OK, but in a mellow sense. So let's try this. So how do you compute the slope? Well, the slope is the rise, how much you go up, which is, well, it kind of sucks, right? OK, there we go which is how much you go up, right? In this case, it's going to be log of b, right? Over the run, how much you go over, which in this case is just b, OK? Likewise, if we look at uh, for a, it's going to be the same thing, right? How much do you go up? You go up log of a. How much did you go over? You go, went over a. So log of a over a, OK. And if we believe the picture, then the slope on the right has got to be greater than the slope on the left. Okay, and since a and b are positive numbers because they're bigger than one, right? We can just multiply across and get rid of them. So multiply both sides by a. And I'll get a log b on the left, uh, and then just log a on the right. And I multiply both sides by b. That I'll get rid of this b, kill this b, right? And bring it over here. Okay, that's just multiplying through by a and b. Or I guess you could say multiply by a b on the left and a b on the right. Okay, uh, and then you know the thing with exponents, right? Or logs actually. So if we do the thing with logs, log of a times the log of b is the same as the log of b to the a, right? And then b times the log of a is the same as the log of a to the b. My bad, let me be clear on that. It is not the log of b raised to the eighth power. It is the log of b raised to the eighth power. Okay? Okay, so maybe I should write it like this to be clear. Okay. And if we clean this up now, let me just keep that inequality going. That's going to be log of b to the a is less than log of a to the b. OK. But we said that this guy was an increasing function, right? So what this is telling you is, if you think of the log value as the output, the output on the right is bigger than the output on the left. But that means that the input on the right must be bigger than the input on the left. So that implies 
that a to the b is greater than b to the a. Okay, if this is true though, then we're done, right? Because what we can do is we can set a to be e and b to be pi. And now, what we've argued is that b to the a, that is pi to the e, is less than a to the b, which is e to the pi. And you've actually shown a stronger statement. It's not just true for e and pi, it's true for anybody as long as they're bigger than e. Okay? All right. Beep. Hi guys, so let's go ahead and prove what we said about the fact that if you look at these guys, and as long as you're past e, so as long as we have e, or maybe at least at e, and you have two guys like this, right? Remember we said that if you looked at these slopes, I think if we looked at, for example, this slope, so let's pick A and across, this would be log of A. And then if we pick this guy, B, let's do um, cross log of B, right? And then our claim was if you looked at the slope of this guy here, that that would be greater than the slope of this guy here, okay? So if you believe the picture, it looks kind of clear. But if you want to be a little bit more rigorous about it, let's go ahead and show that, okay? So what we want to do Literally, is... Literally, let's think of the slope. So I'm talking about the slope from the origin to our point A and to our point B, right? But you know how they get the slope. So let's do this for the yellow guy. So for the yellow guy, if I wanted to do the slope here, that would be rise over run. So how much do you go up? You go up from 0 to log of A. So we want the slope here. And that's going to be rise over run. Okay. And in this case, it's going to be going up from 0 to log of A, so log of A. Uh, and the run, how much you go over is from 0 to A, so it's going to be A. Okay, uh, that would be for A, right? For B, it would be the same thing. Does everybody agree? Yeah, I mean, same format. It would be log of B over B. Okay, so what's the general pattern? So the general pattern is, if we look for the slope, it's going to be log of whatever your input is divided by that input. Okay? Okay, that's the equation we're looking at. So you want to show that as you go from left to right, from A to B, right, that that slope is getting less. So what we want to do is take the derivative here, right, and show that actually as you go from left to right, it's going to decrease. Okay, so first things first, let's just give it a name. Let's call this guy um, f of x. Okay, so I want to take the derivative, and that's what we're going to do. So we're going to do that right here. So let's just do some mellow practice here. It's the bottom times the derivative of the top, which is log of x, which is 1 over x, right, minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, which is 1, whoops. So log of x times 1. Okay, over the bottom squared. Okay, so our value here is actually going to be 1 minus this guy, log of x, over So our guy is going to be 1 minus log of x over x squared. Um, that's what we're looking for. Okay, so a couple things. If we did have the derivative and we're doing like regular calc stuff, one thing that we would always look for, or one thing that's convenient to look for, is where the derivative is 0, right? Because that might give you, say, the relative max or min or something like that. Maybe even the saddle point. Okay, but um, regardless, we agree this is what the slope is like. And we want to show as you go from A to B, the slope is going to decrease. Okay, so one thing that might be helpful, just so we gain some insight, is look for a critical point. And you know, a critical point occurs when we set this value equal to zero, right? So let's do that. Kill this. Since this is important, I'm going to reiterate this. That's the function we're trying to work with. Okay. And let's go ahead and set this function right here that we found, right? Uh, equal to zero. Okay. Let's also put in our restrictions, right? Because the restrictions are we're looking basically for guys that are e and above. But you know what? Let's just keep it mellow and extend it all the way across. So from zero on up. Okay. Uh, and in fact, we'll never really hit zero, so let's exclude zero. So if we don't worry about zero because this is going to go down to infinity, then really in this range that we care about, which is x is greater than 0. What do we know about this function? Well, uh, let's figure this out. Since x won't be allowed to be 0, it'll be some small positive value. We can multiply both sides by that and get 0 is equal to 1 minus log of x. Okay. We solve this equation by bringing this over. We get the log of x is equal to 1. Right? And we know that the only value we can plug in here that will give us 1 is going to be e. Right? I mean, if you want to be really anal about it, you can take e of both sides, and you'll definitely get this. Okay, so that's actually a critical point, right? So it's a magic value where the derivative is literally zero. Okay, so right here, I guess that's what makes this guy special. So right along this line, that does not mean the slope is zero, because you can clearly see here the slope is not zero, right? But we're saying the derivative we're looking at, which is the way the slope is changing. 
So when we're right here, right at this guy, the slope is not increasing or decreasing. Right around here, the slope is kind of leveling off. So whatever slope this is, it'll pretty much want to stay that way. Okay, so now the question is, what happens when we go to the right or to the left? Do you guys agree? Okay, so we know that E is sort of this magical value, and we found that it's actually the critical point, right? It's where the derivative of our function actually hits zero. Okay, so we need to test what's happening beyond that, because we, ca we care about guys that are at E or bigger, right? But that's pretty mellow, because if you look at this function in general, so if you look at this guy, one minus log of x over x squared. And remember, in the range we're looking at, x is a positive value, so this bottom is always gonna be positive. The sign of this guy really just depends on the top, right? And since we know that, um, well, log of e gives you 1, and that would give the top being 0, right? Since log okay. is an increasing function. If you plug in bigger inputs, you should get bigger outputs. So to the right, you're, having, you're putting in bigger inputs, which means this value will be bigger than 1, right? Because we said that at e, the value is 1. So if our input's bigger than e, then the value is going to be what? Bigger than 1. But 1 minus the guy bigger than 1 is definitely going to be negative. So you'd have a negative over positive, which is a negative, which shows what we wanted to show that once you get beyond E, right, the slope is actually decreasing. Okay, no big deal. And just as an extra side note, we can show something else. Uh, if we're going between zero and E, right, then what's the logic there? Well, if you're going between zero and E, then you have this guy. This value is still positive, right? But then since the input here is gonna be less than E, the output will be less than one. So one minus a number less than one is gonna be some positive value over a positive value, and that would give us a positive value. Okay? What that means is, if we're to the left, somewhere between here and here, right? As you move, remember, when you always talk about slopes and derivatives, you're talking about moving from left to right generally. So if we go from any value in here, say like uh, along this line, as you move right to the right, the slope is actually increasing. So that really shows for this to work, we really need our values to be E or bigger. Okay? Uh, and if we had two values seen here, say like right here and right here, Right? This wouldn't work, right? We just showed that as you go from here to here, the respective slopes would actually be increasing, so it wouldn't be valid anymore. Okay? So anyway, what's the final conclusion? The final conclusion is for guys that look like this, right? It is in general true that um, I guess a to the b is greater than b to the a. Okay? And that'll solve the whole e to the pi, pi to the e thing. Okay? However, if we're over on this side, right, from the first part of the video, it actually flips. So if you're in values that are like this, that are basically, um, say, a less than b less than or equal to e like this, right? Then in this range, it's actually the flip. It's actually the case that b to the a is greater than a to the b, okay? So it's interesting. We start off with that, you know, pseudo-famous problem, actually famous problem, the e to the pi versus pi to the e, and we end up getting something more general. So we can make general statements about guys beyond and below, and it's interesting that e itself happened to be magical in this respect, okay? So anyway, hopefully this helped.